Hi everybody and welcome back to Rich Reviews. I'm Richard and today we're at Caffeine and Machine. So we've been talking about coming to Caffeine and Machine for quite a while, myself and my, and my son. Um, we're on a 458 WhatsApp group, so we've been communicating with a few of the guys and we drove up with a, with a couple of guys in tandem. And uh, this is our first time here at um, Caffeine and Machine. And it's quite an interesting setup. First of all, um, at the weekend, you have to retain a, a parking slot, which costs a nominal amount. At the moment, that's 10 pounds. So you, set up, so you book a parking slot um, over the weekend, you don't have to during the week. And then when you come here, you're actually um, directed through to the actual correct parking areas, which is, which is all the way around. You've got the parking in the front here and then you've got the parking around the back as well. And you're directed by various parking attendants and they give you a, a ticket for your car, um, which is in effect as a sticker and you get a track and trace as well for the COVID situation. So it's quite a good setup here. Uh, we'll take a look around the car park and see what we've got here today. Uh, we came up with another 458 owner. Interestingly, a, a McLaren 650S Spider um, was in front of us and then it happened, um, it, we saw it actually stopped on the side of the road. So this, obviously the possibility is there that it was broken down. It looked like it had broken down. Um, don't know whether it had or not. Um, but it ended up behind us and actually followed us into the car park as well. So that's here as well. So Caffeine and Machine is in the Cotswold area, which is near North Leach. Uh, it's about uh, 50, 50 to 60 miles away from where we live in Wiltshire. So um, it's not too bad a drive and it's, it's, a, it's a nice place to visit. I don't know when Caffeine and Machine started, but I know it's been established for quite a while now. Um, but when by quite a while, I mean a few years, I don't know, don't know how particularly long that is. But, uh, but yeah, so let's take a look around the car park and see what we've got around. So today we've come up with one of our other 458 owners, friends, from uh, one of the WhatsApp groups. As you can see, this is my car here and this is my colleague's Italia. Um, car looking absolutely astonishing in this sun. You can, you can see the work that's been done by Reap Midlands here. Astonishing, uh, astonishingly good work on the actual detailing of the paintwork and obviously putting the film on and the necessary coating that they put on downstream from that to make it look like it does. This is the soft parking area. So you, unfortunately you come in through a gravel drive section, which isn't great. Obviously you drive very slowly if you're worried about the paintwork on your car, even if it is PPF. Um, and then you can come around and actually come onto this soft parking area, which is quite nice and uh, makes it nice and easy. Uh, but there's such a, a wealth of parking here um, which I've, I have heard actually they, they do get really packed during the summer periods over the weekend so this perceivably um, gets fully fully booked up in here over the weekends which is quite impressive um, there must have been a I don't know how many cars this place could could fit in but it's got to be into the I don't know 500 to a thousand mark I would have said something like that um, quite a substantial amount but let's take a look around you see friends Italia here Rosso Corsa, Crema interior. Crema interior actually looks pretty spotless. Excuse the sunglasses, by the way, it's very bright. So on this, uh, on this model, obviously you've got the glass clear screen. It's great that they could do that on the Italia. It's, it's such a shame that they couldn't actually provide that capability on the 458 Spider. Obviously you've got the, the roof that comes down into the back of the section of the car. So it's stowed away here, so that it prevents you from actually showing that part of the engine, but they could still have a glass panel in here. And there is, a company which is actually called Capristo, who are well known for making the, the um, third party exhaust for Ferraris, uh, perceivably mainly the 355, of course, are well known for the 355. Uh, they do provide actually a new rear panel that you can put on the 458, which replaces this total panel, and it has a glass section in here, and it does actually show the front part of the engine. So that is an option, but the trouble with that is it isn't a standard option. One of the annoying things for me as well, I mean, I'm, I'm such a pedantic bugger that I really notice everything, I always notice defects, unfortunately. Um, I have eased off a lot throughout my, my age, in, throughout my years in life, but I still notice things that really annoys me. So it's really annoying that um, on, these, on these exhaust tips, um, you, get, you get some smog actually going out onto the actual end so when you're parked up it's almost like you have to have a bloody rag with you all the time just to clean it off and I know a lot of you would be thinking bloody hell what a pedantic bugger but unfortunately when you 
like nice things and you keep things to a really um, high standard, you notice things like that. And so that in itself would be possibly a good reason why to put the actual, what they call the sports exhausts on um, Ferrari sports exhausts. And by the way, Ferrari sports exhaust in the 458 is just um, anodized rear, rear exhaust tips. It's not actually a sports exhaust per se. Um, more on the sports exhaust later in another film. I might go for a, a, an IPE or an in-canal exhaust, but that's to come downstream. Keep watching and subscribe. <laughs> but yeah, so I might change those exhaust tips for actually the black anodized versions known as the sports ones at some point going forward. I don't know. If that annoys me enough, I probably will. <laughs> so this is one of the other cars that's just come in, 911 GTS. I think it's a 991 911 GTS. Um, you look at it, uh, it's slammed on the actual suspension. And not my, not my thoughts of a nice car at all in its design and, and the way it's been put together. My personal opinion is that um, this sort of air suspension does not look good on a car and the, the wheels are too big and they're just, it just looks bloody awful in my opinion. Let me, let me, <laughs> obviously it's my opinion. So let me know in the, in the comments below what, what your thoughts are. I love 911s by the way. Obviously I owned one before. Um, but that design just it doesn't do it for me. I think that's been overly modded. But uh, yeah, let me know in the comments what you think. So this is the Chevy Impala. This is part of the artwork here that's at Cafe in the Machine. As you can see, it's been here quite a while and it doesn't actually uh, go into storage at all. Um, I believe it doesn't go into storage at all. It certainly looks like it's been out during the winter period. As you can see, this is slammed on air suspension as well. Not a great look in my opinion. I just don't like this, uh, this type of uh, air suspension, but it is what it is. Maybe it's your thing. It's just a personal choice. This 458 isn't anything to do with us. This is just an, another person at uh, Caffeine Machine. As you can see here, they've got the actual diamond cut wheels here, which are really nice. But the, pro and the reason why I haven't got diamond cut wheels on my 458 is because the trouble with diamond cut wheels is they're not painted. And by that, I mean that you can't hide any, any blemishes. So if you do any remedial work or you have to have remedial work done on diamond cut wheels, um, then you're, you're into having to remove material all the time. So if you curb these wheels, you've got to remove material. And obviously you can only re remove certain amount of material on a wheel before it weakens it to the extent where you've got to buy a new wheel. So that's the problem with diamond cut wheels. If, you, if they do get damaged, obviously you get them lacquered and such like, but if they do get damaged or they get pitted or whatever, then you're into removing material on the wheel. Um, and then you're going to end up in a cyclic situation where eventually you're going to have to buy a new wheel. Now, probably that's a negative perception. Probably that cycle to get to its nth level, we have to renew the wheel, um, will be downstream many years. I don't know, but I'm just not willing to take that chance, I guess. Maybe I will at some point. Maybe I will get my wheels diamond cut. Who knows? But this is quite a nice spec of uh, 458. It's got the number plate actually affixed to the front. It's probably stickered onto the front there. Um, which is the wise choice rather than actually um, screwing it on. Uh, it's got the, uh, the comfort seats inside, um, the Daytona comfort seats inside, which is quite nice, Nero interior, uh, quite a nice carbon spec on the car. Russo Corsa obviously on Nero. And uh, yeah, quite a, nice, quite a nice spec. Carbon center console, uh, carbon race, racing zone, carbon um, driving zone, sorry, and um, there's sort of race, race spec as well on the carbon fiber, so that gives you the actual carbon fiber vents as well. So yeah, a nice, speci a nice specification there. Nice car. All 5.8s are nice, all Ferraris are nice. Here you've got an Aston Martin Vantage, obviously owned by a guy called Joe, um, quite definitive on the number plate. And here you've got a 650S Spider, and this is the one that followed us down on the way here. What's the color called on your, on your Spider? Say again, sorry? It's called Turocco Orange. Turocco Orange. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so it's um, original launch colour. So there's like a two-tone sort of flip between uh, like a yellow and orange. You can't really see it without the sun on it. But um, mm. it was actually originally, this is one of the original launch cars. Ah. So it's got every option on it. Um, so that's where I got the, like sort of track pack seats, P1 seats, carbon fibre, carbon fibre bulkhead, carbon fibre door, door, door yeah. covers there. We've got extended paddles. It's just literally every option. Engine bay cover. We were just fortunate enough to actually chat with the owner of this car. So this is the 650S. This is actually a launch car. So this is one of the launch cars. So it's very highly spec. It's in a, tri I think it's called tricolor orange. orange. Turocco orange. But uh, he did actually tell me, but unfortunately <laughs> I was listening to everything else he was saying. Didn't actually um, register the, the name of the color too much. Turocco orange. But it's a very highly spec car and it's been, um, detailed and it's been fully PPF'd as well. Now probably that was done because it was a launch car. It's quite commonly that they would fully PPF wrap a launch car. Um, but you can see it's got beautiful, um, fully spec with carbon fiber. And the actual paintwork, considering as a launch spec car, it's in exceptionally good condition. 
and I think it's done a fair amount of mileage as well for the actual um, for the condition. So yeah, very very nice car, very nice car indeed. And and the owner tells me it's very reliable as well. So um, the, the person before him who actually purchased it knew I think he had it for four or five years. So. Uh, they probably, if there were any issues with reliability, they were knocked out then. But then these cars can be very reliable. Um, they've got a bad name at the moment. If you have a bad car, then it can be a real nightmare. But some of the cars are very reliable. Unfortunately, the unreliable cars tend to overshadow all the cars that are actually reliable. So something that McLaren's got to do with its brand, they've got to, they've got to change that situation. So we've finished our time slot, our time slot for the weekend, or you put your time slots for the morning or for the afternoon. We had a morning time slot from nine o'clock to 12 o'clock to midday. So we're just leaving now because it's just past 12 o'clock. So we've overstayed our welcome a little bit. So we're just leaving uh, Cafe in the Machine. Just moving out behind the Fiesta ST. There's a saying as you come out of the car park at Cafe in the Machine, it's don't be a dick. It says on, a, on three different signs, don't be a dick. And obviously that's because idiots coming out of these events um, and powering off, trying to pose as they're coming out of the car parks and uh, ended up smashing the cars and you know, put, obviously putting people at risk. So yeah, very apt. Well done Caffeine and Machine for that. So we're just driving back on the crossway now. And, uh, and so that's the end of the, end of the trip to Caffeine and Machine, the first trip to Caffeine and Machine. Very nice indeed. Met some, met some really nice people there actually. Met some people uh, associable to uh, Reap Midlands who had their cars done at Reap Midlands as well, which was um, quite quite bizarre. Never planned that. That was that they recognised me um, and recognised the car from from Reap Midlands. So fantastic. It just shows you marketing works, eh? YouTube marketing works. So caffeine the machine in the morning and we're here at the Classic Motor Hub in Bribery in the afternoon. So we've just dropped in here on the off chance because on the way back from caffeine the machine we actually pass the Classic Motor Hub. Um, Classic Motor Hub is an old airfield, old World War II airfield, um, and which has obviously been renovated and they have their own classic cars here that they renovate themselves um, and they also have cars that they buy in obviously from third parties and they, they sell them through their website. Uh, some lovely cars and they're actually reasonably priced compared to you know the actual vehicles that they sell which are obviously very high end. Um, we're just here so we're going to close out the video um, from the Classic Motor Hub. Thanks a lot for watching. If you like the video then please click that like button. Thanks very much. Um, Please subscribe if you're not subscribed already. Some fantastic content to come on the 458 and other supercars. We've got some great events coming forward. And thanks a lot for watching, guys. And um, we'll see you in the next video. I bought some McLaren. A 650S Spider. 650S. And here you've got a 650S Spider.